to another episode of Chanel in the City on iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Chanel Omari, and we got a, such an exciting guest here today. I'm so excited to meet her, to talk to her, and I know you guys are too because you've been requesting her. She is the founder of our new favorite vegan and organic pasta sauce, Pizza Girl. Super cool, super catchy, and she's the new star, one of our favorites of the MTV hit series, The Hills. New Beginnings, currently airing on MTV, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Please welcome our dear friend, Caroline DeMore. Am I pronouncing it right? You're doing it right. I'm so impressed, actually. Everybody always says D'Amore because of the apostrophe. Right. But you got it right. It's Amore, but with a D. D'Amore. Is that Italian? Duh. Amore, amore. Amore, yes, exactly. Now, now it's all making sense. The pasta sauce, amore. Oh. Yes, I'm actually Italian. It's an actual authentic brand. I love that. Let's talk about the brand first and foremost, because, you know, Chanel in the City audience, we're here to talk about anything that's happening at the 411, what people are missing, you know, what they need to uh, know about. You know, health is a big thing with us. So talk to us about relaunching Pizza Girl and what inspired you behind this brand? Yeah, you know, like, so I grew up in an Italian pizza foodie family, Demore's Pizza, very well-known uh, pizza restaurant out here in California. Um, we have several locations in Malibu and Camarillo and Thousand Oaks, um, all run by my dad, very mom and pop, but, you know, there was only a pop. So he did it all on his own and, you know, had to uh, you know, raised us on his own. So we were at all the catering gigs and it was just something that I was just raised into. And then when I got old enough to want to actually take part in the business, um, I found that it was really, really difficult to work with my family. <laughs> and I know a lot of families out there can relate. You know, you think you know everything and the right way to do a business. And then your parents are set in their ways and they won't let you like do what you know is current and now. And they're like, social media what is that you know what I mean so it was just it was a very big like conflict of personalities basically so I was like all right this is your business you guys do your thing and I'm gonna go and start my own brand and I really found that there was a wide open gap for something in this category in the Italian sauce category um it was all very like male driven with like, you know, the Rayos and the Newmans or, you know, it was like an old grandma on the jar. It was never something that spoke to me as a millennial mom for millennial moms, something, you know, where you really care about the ingredients. I couldn't find anything that ticked all the boxes, like no sugar added, no preservatives, you know, um, it's truly the healthiest sauce you can find in a jar without compromising on taste because taste is so important. You know, you find those like keto sauces and these like super low sodium sauces, but they have no flavor. So you have to find that balance. And, you know, extra virgin olive oil, that's that's good for you. You know what I mean? So these type of things, like like people, uh, <laughs> hi. People, <laughs> people just come out from the back. From the people just come out the back. You know what? This is a family run, you know, operation. So let me tell you, there's just, yeah, she's going to go and do that. It's organic, but I love how organic you are. No, this is oh, yeah, no, no, We are. Listen, like, I can't pretend like I'm, you know, something that I'm not. My daughter could run in at any moment. So let's just be prepared for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that I just felt like it was a wide open space in the market. Definitely something like it was waiting for Pizza Girl to come and fill this gap. And I'm finding that with a lot of these supermarkets, you know, um, Gelson's, for instance, out here was our first supermarket to take me back since relaunch. And they were like, we need you, you know, our clientele, you know, is looking for that more um, just conscious, um, you know, small batch, um, you know, products. Like we're, we're kind of sick of, these, you know, like giant companies that don't really care about, you know, the little guy. So I'm out there pounding the pavement, trying to get people to taste the sauce. And so far, so good, man. Everybody who tries it just freaks out over it. It's oh, I'm true. obsessed. With, I mean, you know, I was so lucky. You Thank you so much for sending me and our team, like the sauces. They're amazing. And same thing with me, you know, I'm a single millennial, but I'm always trying to eat healthy. I'm, you know, we're, we're trying to look our best, but I want to be my authentic self. So when I have, and there isn't anything vegan or organic that you can't lose, like it doesn't have a similar taste to real authentic pasta sauce, like right. Italian sauce that you're used to the red and yours is 
like exactly that. You don't feel like you're missing out on anything. Well, let me tell you something. You go to Italy and people aren't, you know, overweight weight and super sickly like they are in here in America. You know what I mean? Like they're eating pasta and this and that, but it's the quality ingredients. Like we are using terrible ingredients out here and that's what's killing everybody. You know, that's what's causing you know, a lot of illnesses. So it's really important to me. And I, well, I wanted to create a product that I felt comfortable feeding my little daughter. You know what I mean? She eats the sauce right out of the jar. Oh. And I know in my gut and my blood that I am feeding her something so, so quality. So everybody else out there can know that like, when it comes to pasta sauce, pizza girl is your girl. <laughs> and we're going to hook up the Chanel in the city audience. We're going to post it on my socials when the Woo. podcast airs. Awesome. Um, right. And Caroline's just been so gracious. We're going to do a percentage off so that you guys can get to taste her amazing pizza girl sauce. And it's so flirty and fun and cool. Talk to us about why the name and why relaunch. Totally. Okay. So this is a whole thing. And you know, I, I had to be really honest with my, with my people, you know, a lot of people are scared to admit that you tried and failed. Um, I'm very honest about everything. Right. So yeah. I, so the That's name, we love you too. So sorry. Yes. Oh, Please. thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, I get, you know, I get nervous sometimes, but you gotta like, just be real. And I feel like a lot of people will relate to you, um, and respect you for that. So the name pizza girl came from growing up in the pizza restaurants. So me, so walking down the street or walking into a party as a teenager, I always got that whole like, hey, pizza girl, where's the pizza at? You know, and I was always like, oh, stop calling me the pizza girl. I hated it so much. But then I was like, you, know what? you guys are going to call me the pizza girl. I'm going to be the pizza girl. I finally decided to own it. And it really just made sense. And that's where the name came from. Super simple. But people are like, the pizza girl makes pasta sauce. Eventually, yes, I will grow my brand. But I'm really, really particular. I'm really cautious in my expansion plan. I just want to make sure that every product um, is as fantastic as these first three sauces. So I'm going to do a slow expansion and just make sure that the quality control is always like first priority. Um, but eventually, yeah, we're going to have so many different things. I'm actually looking to uh, go to Milan soon to source some, you know, really amazing olives for olive oils. And we're going to do, you know, dressings down the line. And I'm always thinking and developing, but for right now, I just want to keep it concise to these three sauces. Um, well, isn't it all in the sauce, right? That's the Italian, I mean, I could be wrong, but it's the Italian way where to create a pizza, to create the right pasta, right? It has to be all in the sauce. You are so not wrong. My grandmother called the sauce the gravy and the gravy is just the base of everything. Like we're trying to redirect people's opinion of pasta sauce. So many people think, oh, it's just pasta and you know, that's, uh, you know, that's fattening or this and that. Actually, you use this sauce for so many different dishes. We're, we don't want to, we want to hear from you guys, what you guys are doing with the, these pizza girl sauces. And I'm making soups with it. You know, you can take the, you can take the arbiata, you can pour it in, you can add some um, vegetable stock. And then you throw in a bunch of your favorite vegetables, you know, you throw in your vegan, so tofu and, you know, different delicious, um, whatever you want. And you throw it in there, you cook it up and the sauce, the flavor of it just like absorbs whatever you're cooking, you know, like for the pescatarians, we've done like salmon in these soups and stuff like that. And it's just so incredible. Um, you can really do anything with it. We did like a breakfast chorizo the other morning, my boyfriend and I, yeah, you add the sauce, you throw some eggs on top, cook it in some chorizo, add some bread, you know, if you want or whatever it is that you want um, to just dip it. It's, there's so many options, you know? You have a favorite sauce. So people get annoyed with me with this question because I love sauce. It's, it's all amazing for different vibes, for different times. And that's why I did these uh, little commercials where I, um, I added a personality to each sauce. So like the marinara is, you know, she's my old faithful. She's the one you marry. She's the one that's like gonna be there for you every day and always have your back. You know, my Arbiata, that's the spicy one. You don't wanna mess with her, you know, she will totally, you know, um, come for you. It's like, and then uh, the vodka sauce is like the wild one, the girl's night out, you know, that's when you wanna be decadent and like have like, you know, something special. So, you know, um, yeah, right now it's just a different personality. I, I'm a Gemini, so I have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I love it. What, what would you say, so talk to us in terms of like relaunching, would yeah. you say, and, and you know, you grew up in LA, you, you've been, you know, you're known to also work with, hang out with like the Paris Jacksons of the world, right? The Paris Hiltons, the Kim Kardashians. 
would you say they were customer base? Would you say they, you know, and talk to us a little bit about that and then kind of go into the relaunch that you, what you want us to know about that. Yeah. So it's an interesting, crazy dynamic. And I think one day I'll, you know, I'll write a book about my weird life, but I, I definitely like, I grew up in Malibu, but I grew up as the pizza man's daughter. So I ended up having these friends that were like, interesting billionaires and like super famous and children of and I wasn't you know what I mean I was just the pizza man's not not just I'm very proud to be the pizza man's daughter but let me tell you um it was a very weird world when I was in the media as a you know that that early 2000s it girl era with like Paris Hilton and the Kardashians and you know people saw me out there and I remember the media needing um, to define me. They needed a reason for why I was with these girls. So they made up this whole elaborate story in the LA Times that said like, um, pizza heiress, Caroline DeMore. And they like, they like ripped me to shreds in a way um, because I had tried several different, you know, creative outlets. And I didn't think anybody was even paying attention. You know what I mean? I did an indie film with some, with Aaron Paul and some friends. I did, I was just young and feeling out what I wanted to do with life. And it was crazy because they just so badly needed to define me. They couldn't understand why I was like in this group. So the pizza heiress thing, that was just such a joke. You know, I, I was in there working my butt off. I was catering with my dad. I was delivering pizzas just to make enough money to go out and be able to hang out and be, even be on the same level as some of my friends. And it's so funny because I couldn't keep up with them um, you need financially. You a TV show. Like I literally make this a script, right? Yeah. Like I mean, it's coming out in different ways, but like I yeah. couldn't keep up with them. So I remember I would go to downtown. I couldn't buy all the dresses to go out every night. You know, you never wear the same thing twice. And I would go downtown and just buy bolts of fabric, put them on my body, and sew them on. And I remember this one night, Nikki Hilton, who I was kind of scared of back in the day, came up to me and was like, "Where'd you get that dress?" And I just remember feeling feeling so proud because I had made it like five minutes ago and was gonna have to like cut it off later. <laughs> and it was just like kind of cool because I somehow ended up like, you know, it ended up all kind of working. And then they ended up really like respecting me for like, you know my, my hard work and my work ethics and they're really good people. And they ended up, you know, having my back in a lot of ways. You know, I ended up touring the world with Paris Hilton as her DJ when her stars are blind album came out, you know, right, because you DJed also, you've been a big, yeah, I was one of the big first. name as a DJ in the industry, which is again, like, so I've DJed also, but people forget that yeah. because it's almost like, even as a woman, even like what you said, define me, the media has to define me. I love that you say that because on our, on our podcast, we talk about, mental health and especially in the media and how it's, you know, I had a one time reality show. Now this is not about me. It's about you. But what I could relate to with you is this, this, this obsession that the media has to define who you are and it doesn't matter if it serves you or not. And you kind of are stuck with it. Meanwhile, you've had all these different walks of life, you work ethic where you've worked your ass off, whether it was a family business or not. The fact that you had to deliver pizza, and yes, it might seem glamorous that you're chilling with Paris Hilton, but then you have to DJ, and that's a job in itself. So yeah. it's just like amazing how, and then you get to the hills, right? Because people think that it's overnight, but it's yeah. not overnight. You had to actually like, you're like, I wish it was overnight, but there's so many different avenues. Like talk to us about this journey. I mean, DJing for Paris Hilton, how fucking cool is that? Yeah, it was so cool. Are you kidding me? Like I, it, I got to see parts of the world that I never would have gotten to see. And she also became one of my best friends. So it just became like such a fun experience. And she, you know, she always had my back and, you know, like actually just the other day, Kathy posted the pizza girl sauce on her page. Cause you know, she's blowing up right now with um, the housewives and like, they've just always like been really like proud of me. And I remember like at a dinner, um, uh, for actually Kathy's birthday. It was just a few of us at a table at Mr. Chow's and Chris Jenner was there. And I remember when Chris said to me, she was like, pizza girl is it. She was like, that's your thing. She was like, you've, you've sorted it out. I'm, you know, I'm impressed and this is it. And hearing that from her, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because, you know, she's like the boss of all bosses. Well, like Chris Jenner, are you kidding? That's like, yeah, the biggest deal. Well, that's interesting. I was going to ask you because like, in terms of we know we have to transition in order to become to continue being relevant right whether we have brands or ourselves as talent did you feel like a transition where you were like like i guess what made you think like i'm always going to stick with pizza girl and like what do you still dj like do you still act or it's kind of all in the same umbrella and when people tell you well you can't do this and you can't do this 
what's your answer? Because you've, you've kind of done it all, right? You know what's funny is I had a manager, and I hope he hears this, because he made me feel so bad back in the day, because he was like, he called me the um, jack of all trades and the master of none. Um, and I was, and he was like, you have a movie that failed, you know, and it didn't fail. It's Rory Rowe. I have so many fans from that. Are movie. you kidding? It's one of my right? favorite. Can I just tell you, I just watched it. I smoked the J and I fucking watched it two weeks ago. So he could go kiss my ass. Right. Sorority Row is also, it's with Lala Kent and it's with like a lot of big people that are still really relevant. No, no sorority row. See, Oh my God. No, but sorority oh, row. No, I know what you're talking. No, I do not know. No. It was yes. a similar one. No, I have watched Sorority Row, though. I have watched it. I know exactly yes. what you're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. So Sorority Row was, um, it was a Summit Pictures film, and I actually, Audrina from the Hills. Audrina, was that's who I meant. I'm sorry. Audrina And, and Rumor Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rumor Willis was in it, and, um, um, oh my God, why am I blinking out on Princess Leia's name? I feel so terrible. I feel early Alzheimer's. I got for Oh my God, who, what's her name? I feel so bad. She's so amazing. I'm just thinking out right now. Um, no, but I remember that and it was a very good, meaning it wasn't a, a failure because it was success. It was like on yeah. demand. It was at, in the Oh class. yeah, it was, ever, and, and, and what the point of it all is, is that um, I had done that and then I had, you know, two record deals. I had one with um, Sony in Japan and, you know, there was billboards of me everywhere in Japan and Tower Records and all of that. I put out a couple, I put out like the first DJ record mashup with some Japanese artists. That was really cool. I had done a lot of really cool things and they were all almost really successful. You know what I mean? But that's how you learn. And that's what I realized. Like if I hadn't gone through all these different businesses and failed at them, you actually need to fail in order to learn. Um, in order to really feel that failure, you need to sit in that failure and that's how you're going to not do it again and you're going to really achieve success. So I'm grateful for all of my failures um, and I'm really, um, I just know that Pizza Girl is not, not going to fail. It is my thing. Now with the DJing, my DJ agent, uh, I'm a scam artist and they, they, oh, yeah. yeah, and he hit me up and he's like, he's like, you gotta come out and you know do it again, and it kind of made me a little nervous because you know I used to be, I used to party. You know I was a big party girl, and that's that's true. That's true about me. I got a little deep in you know the drugs and the alcohol and stuff like that, and I'm really in a completely different like healthy place these days. Obviously, I have a child and a business, and I'm just a different person. So for me, that world is a little scary. Um, for me because it was, it represents, you know, a really wild time in my life. And I have a lot of friends who are DJs who are either dead or in AA and sober, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not an easy world to live in for too long and it does have a lifespan, you know? Um, so I feel, I think I really did it really well. And there will be some gigs that'll come that I'll just do for fun, but that's not my career. You know, I just did a gig recently and it was so fun. Um, but I just did it for fun. You know what I mean? So just to switch it up for a night and get out of my head and dance with everybody and have a blast. So that was great. And I loved it. But pizza girl is a full-time job. Um, that and being a mom, I mean, I'm not just one of those people on a reality show that has a brand and they're just the face of it. I am the CEO. I'm in the trenches. I am, you know, not just like the founder and face. I do the day to day, all day, every day um, with my two partners who are incredible. And um, I'm just excited every single day by the growth. I mean, we just got Gelson's. We just got, um, we just launched a couple months ago. You're actually going to see the launch on the Hills, which is so exciting. Okay. I'm so excited because we we're, you know, I've been watching it and we're waiting for the launch, you know, which is going to be so exciting. Talk to us a little bit about that, and then we're going to get into a couple more questions, if you don't mind, yeah. to the hills. So we got, we got, uh, we got Gelson's, Bristol Farms, we got 65 Whole Foods confirmed. Um, yeah, so we're just growing and growing. And lots of small, um, one-off high-end markets that I just think are so incredible. So yeah, it's just a really safe and healthy expansion plan. People can go to pizzagirl.com right now in the U.S. and, and order the sauce. And we're just going to continue to roll out supermarkets and surprise people with, you know, a new product. They can order their own individual sauces, right? Yep. They're great gifts as well, guys. If you're they listening, are to great gifts. We're They're getting awesome ready. Gifts. We're already getting ready for holiday. It's crazy. You already got to think that far in advance to like figure out your packaging for holiday. And it's definitely a beautiful gift. And, you know, um, it's a great thing to give to your college kids because, you know, if they're eating well, it's a great thing to give to your, you know, your friends who are have, you know, small families because, you know, they always have something in their 
in their cupboard that they can feed their kids. So I'm just really proud of it, you know? I love it. We're so proud of you. We're loving it. And also we're so like, okay, so you're captivating us not only by your pizza girl brand who we're loving and you're changing the world by the day, but now you're on one of the most popular hit series. Not only is it new, right? Cause new beginnings, but it's been a franchise show over 10 years, iconic, legendary, goes down in reality TV, even scripted history, right? So mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about how you joined the cast, which is funny because you said, I've had an organic relationship with Audrina. I was in a movie with her. We forget, we forget. We're so blinded uh, as a society by, like we have to see things in the moment to believe it, I feel, you know, or right. the hype to, or you have to be this famous so we can pay attention. but. It's just amazing how long of a way you've come, how hard you've worked, and like to see you on such a great uh, series, which is one of my favorite shows in the world. And <laughs> literally, we fell in love with you because you're so cool, you're so down to earth, and you're right, you're not the typical girl that lives in the hills. So it's cooler for someone like me from New York to relate to you, you know what I mean? Or oh, I somebody who, who's a single mother or somebody who is a millennial who's part of the LGBTQ community, which we're gonna get into, you know, with you and Kara, you know, with, I'm sorry, which is Caitlin. Caitlin yeah. and you have such a special moment, which, you know, so talk to us about, as I rambled on my Jewish yentiness. Talk oh, to us about, Italians are ramblers too, let me tell we're you. We're the same, right? So we're sisters. Yeah, yeah um, totally. <laughs> tell us how you joined the cast and like, what's been the experience? Yeah, how have yeah you so, so it's interesting because I did have a lot of, um, of connections you know i went to high school with brody um okay. i yeah so i've known a lot of a lot of the a lot of these people for a long time frankie and i from the club scene from when i was djing um you know so i had a lot of of already friendships and then spencer and heidi asked me to um bring my family pizza truck to their kids um their kids birthday gunner's birthday last season this was um, before the show before you joined the cast full -time. before i was joined as a cast member yeah so i was like of course you know great exposure for me thank you for asking and you know i'll do this for you guys great and then they also asked me to dj their wedding and then i was friends with misha barton and she was on last season so i was just around a lot um and then there was rumor had it that like some of the producers were kind of interested in me and some of the cast members actually did not like that at all. And they actually kind of like went against in secretive ways, like against me, which I wasn't aware of until producers told me that they were actually actively trying to keep me off the show. That's interesting that producers were telling you because a lot of us don't know that where that's where the drama stems from, but we don't see. Right. That's some of the stuff you guys don't see for sure. So it's like, yeah, it was interesting because I, so for the last season, I did an event for Pizza Girl um, and I actually, Kathy Hilton said that I could do an event at her home and we could have the Hills come and the Hills characters come and I could feed them Pizza Girl. It was such a great opportunity um, for Pizza Girl to just be featured on the Hills. I never thought I'd be a character, right? So a bunch of the characters come. We did this great, amazing scene for last season at, the, at um, Kathy's house. The whole thing ends up on the cutting room floor because Misha Barton refused to talk about me in the interviews afterwards. So when they asked her about me, she refused to speak my name and that got back to me. And I remember one night she felt kind of bad and she was like kind of trying to tell me and warn me that she had done this in a way, but not fully own up to it. And then I find out and I was just like, how could you do this to me? You know what I mean? After all that work, after all that money I put into that event, which I don't have, you know what I mean? Like after all the favors I had to pull, like how could you guys do this to me? Um, actually, Stephanie Pratt called me to apologize after all of that went down one morning. So I was like, I'm a very like loving and kind of like accepting and forgiving human. So I, I, I was really grateful that she called me to apologize. And then all of a sudden I hear that I'm getting cast and Misha's getting replaced with me. And I was like, Karma. Like God, karma. Yeah, it just gave me like full karma chills. And I was just kind of like, I believe so wholeheartedly that just be a good person because the cream will always rise to the top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's so inter it's so admirable, it's admirable to me that like you're saying that whenever they go low, we go high. Like how did you, cause mental health wise, right? That would affect my mental health. And sometimes I'm like, but those people still get away with it. So people in the industry will bully you. I, it's happened to me where they try to take you down. That's why I'm like, holy shit, you are the example of like, 
if you do aim high, look what can happen. They were replaced. Stephanie Pratt's not back, right? And neither right. is Misha Barton. Now, do you right. think it had anything to do with that? I mean, I just know that karma will always come to bite you. I do know that. And I do know that it's not looking. And now some other people are trying um, to just badmouth the show and badmouth everything because they don't like their narrative on the show. But honestly, it's not hard to look good on television. You just have to be a good person and they have to edit around it. You know what I mean? They have to make you, they can't force you to be an asshole, you know? Um, so I just find that like, even right now I'm dealing with, you know, after I, I can't tell you how hard it's been for me because I just don't have that type of personality inside me. Um, and it's been so, so, so hard for me. Um, there's a lot of people I love on the show, but there's people that are really making it really hard um, and purposely trying to get me, you know, when I speak, they say things like, oh, Carolyn, you're just trying to get into a scene. And then they know because they're veterans that like my scene's now going to be cut out, you know, and they know, um, you know, the, like, so I guess the first four episodes, it kind of looks like I didn't really make the show, you know, I'm barely in it. You barely see me. And so a lot of people are saying, um, you know, no, so these people were like, oh, you know, she must be so bummed or whatever. And then episode five happens and it's like a really great episode for me and my background and my history. The next morning, Heidi and Spencer go to Us Weekly and they say it was the most boring episode of the entire season and that the whole show needs to be recast. That is you, what that's really mean. And why do you that's what confuses me. It's like they're they almost so as veterans, they knew by bringing you in as an organic friend, as a woman and a CEO of a, of a popular brand, right, that they are fans of, Pizza Girl, to the last season. Now you're saying that they've had hands in you being cast as full-time cast member in the second season. I don't think what they thought I would ever get cast. I don't think anybody thought I would get cast. I think they were all blindsided by the casting. So yeah. Talk to, right, talk to us a little bit about that and maybe why do you think they're sitting here now kind of, not kind of putting you down and putting your episodes down. And I know how that could be. That's really harsh and hard. Cause you're like, okay, wait a minute, guys, forget the reality TV show. Now we're having issues with our friendships. Like, right. yeah, no, it's really hurtful and shocking and weird. And I know that they're going to hear me, you know, talking about it and they're going to be like, oh, now you're just talking about us and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I'm just commenting on the things that people are asking me questions about. And like, it's hurtful. You know what I mean? It's hurtful. It's hurtful to all the producers. You're literally going around saying the show is terrible. And by the way, the ratings are really good. They're really high and they're growing every single week. And, you know, Heidi and Spencer are going around saying it's the worst show and we need our own spinoff and we need to be on a show just by ourselves. And, you know, everybody sucks. And it's just so mean, you know, you know how hard and you know how many people put their lives on like at risk to film during a pandemic. Forget us who are all getting like nice paychecks and this and that. How about the entire production team? How about the producers that worked their butts off for you ungrateful assholes? You know, ever think about them and you're tearing them apart. You're tearing their businesses apart, their livelihoods apart. It's ungrateful. It's disgusting. And you know what? Lucky for me, it's a new day. It's not 2000 and whenever back in the day when it used to be kind of cool to be an asshole um, and, you know, spend all your money. They're literally complaining on the episode right now that that they're, they're going broke because they're spending $7,000 a month on food and buying $60 burritos. And they think that's funny during a pandemic when people are starving and literally they, they have no jobs and nothing. And then they go out and tear the show apart. It's disgusting. And I honestly, like, I'm embarrassed to be associated with that shit. Is that, is that also, because recently there's been Instagram uh, posts that people are confused about where they're saying they're more fun than the cast. They're more, um, like you're saying, they're more fun than the cast. They're more fun than the show. What's that about? What has happened during filming or on the show that that you can clarify to, to Wait, us? What do you mean by that? What do they, what do, what do they mean they they're recently, more fun? Po they recently posted photos of them. Uh, sorry, Spencer and, and Heidi recently posted photos of themselves on Instagram saying that they're more fun than the cast. Now, they don't say the Hills cast, they say the cast. I don't know if that means... That's what they're doing. This is right. the whole narrative. The whole right? Trouble in Paradise, you're saying, with the friendships. Yeah. Now, it's Brody, you, Audrina, how do you all feel about this? Did, have you talked about it as a collective group? 
I mean, some of us have and some of us have, have not. There's all, uh, there's some alliances and stuff. There's also like some stuff like where people don't want to deal with this wrath that you get from Heidi and Spencer if you go against them. They're so about like alliances and like all this crazy stuff that I'm just not, I don't give a shit about. Um, so um, I, I like, I know that it scares some people to speak their truth about them because they will come for you. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm not scared. So um, I'm just kind of like, this is the truth. This is what's happening. It's unfair. And um, I'm hoping that the world is kind of seeing through it. And um, it kind of seems like they are because I'm getting so much love. I'm getting so many people that are like, thank you for being real. And, you know, like, like for instance, like right after Ashley, Ashley's episode where she goes to visit her father's grave and she tells him that she's pregnant, I bawled my eyes out and I, the, I just got the chills just thinking about it truthfully. And, you know, my mother passed away when I was five and I related to that so much. I wasn't there that day. I didn't know much about that scene. But when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I hear Heidi and Spencer are saying, the show's too dark now. It's so, you know, it's too heavy. And it's like, how about the fact that, how dare you? You know what I mean? Like there's no oh, empathy. Almost. There's no empathy. There's no um, love. There's no, and like people these days, they, they care more, you know, like the younger demographic, they are more in tune with their feelings and mental health. And, you know, there's also the situation where, you know, Spencer just spouted out like a, to Jason, you know, I hope you, you know, go, don't relapse, buddy. Like it's nothing, you know what I mean? And making, and, and talking shit about his like recovery and saying that he's not sober. It's just so beyond my scope of like, I just don't really associate, like, hang out with people like that. So you this can't relate, right? Because you're such a different type of. You're, you're you like are a person that comes from love. You stand for like LGBTQ rights. You're sensitive, absolutely. like you're oh empathetic to other people. You're a millennial single mother. Like you've been through, like you said, even I didn't know this, which I hope we get more. And that's why I, I was going to ask you, would you do another season to get to know you more? Yeah. You know, because even you sharing this on the podcast makes you such a more relatable person that there's so many different facets to you, right? And, like, mm -hmm. that's the kind of examples we need more of. We don't really need the non-empathetic people that don't deserve a platform, right. um, you know, in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, I when you were new, now you're new to the group, how did they treat you, right? How did they treat you coming in? Like, how was this experience well, like, some on the show? Some people treated me so well. Like majority of people on the show are really good people. Adrena is incredible. Obviously, I have so much love for Caitlin on every level. <laughs> um, but um, you know, Brody's always been like a brother to me, like a big brother vibe. Um, you know, I think Justin is one of like the most real people um, on the planet, and I think that's surprising to maybe some of the audience. Um, he's not just this like you know kind of like bad boy like player he's actually like a really intelligent um you know human who's traveled the world on his own and really like seen what he, he's just a good human being and you know um ashley and jason like i jason's one of the first people that had my back you know what i mean he was like i got you like right the first night the very first night i filmed um Spencer actually came up to me because I kind of defended Caitlin because they had been doing some messed up stuff to Caitlin like on the prior season and going around and talking about her and Miley and all this other stuff and it was just inappropriate and I think I had said like hey guys something like this isn't cool I always stand up for people when I feel like they're being wronged or bullied it's just in me um and I remember Spencer came up to me and he was like, you chose the wrong alliance. And I was like, whoa, like, am I in some like weird, like, am I in the twilight zone right now? Like, I don't choose alliances. Like I'm there for friendship and, um, you know, real relationships. And to stand up for what's right and not wrong. Absolutely. That's absolutely. hard to do. That's really yeah. hard to do amongst a crew like that. Like, it's you want scary. to be accepted, you want to be like loved, but then like to do that, that's actually brave that you're like yeah. sitting, hey, I'm not going to stand, I'm going to stand against this because I feel like it's wrong, you know, it's not right or whatever. Absolutely. And Adrena, Adrena is like my really good friend, like she's always on my back, she's so great. Kristen, I adore Kristen, we're homies, 
Um, you know, she's totally had my back. Um, who else? Like everybody, everybody. Brandon, are you, you know, you and Brandon's cool. Brandon's a lot younger. So we haven't been like, we haven't hung out much. Um, but he's friends with one of my best friends and you know, we, um, I, I, yeah, Brandon's a cool kid. He's obviously very intelligent. You know, I, I actually had more confidence in the show when I heard, saw him on last season. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. You know, they're going through people with like, you know, something, something to talk about, you know? In terms of, we're going to get to Caitlin and your friendship with her because we really love that friendship and it's growing as we see it. Um, and also Pride Month, we talk about, like, you have talked to her about your feelings that you have for her, right, romantically. Do you want to, I mean, of course, just talk to us a little bit about how that came about. Did you always have feelings for her? I know you have a boyfriend now. Are you, do you label yourself? Do you feel like, oh, man, we might not be able to talk about this right I'm now. like, my dad's in the other room. No, no, it's okay. It's, um, <laughs> I, it's fine. It's out in the world. It's just like, you know, you feel like a kid whenever you're hanging out with your family, you know? I know. I, yeah, totally. but I, um, I've always like identified as fluid and I use that word because it just makes sense to me. It's kind of like, you just kind of like, I feel like everybody has like a masculine and feminine, feminine side. And like when we're born, like society, like puts you in these boxes and they tell you how to feel and what's right and what's wrong. And they'll tell the boy, you know, uh, you know, if you don't like pink, you know, and they'll take the Barbie away, but you know what I mean? And it's just very like, we're just taught and told. And I think that if we weren't taught and told, we might have more openness to um, different meat suits. You know what I mean? For me, I'm attracted to the energy. I'm not attracted to, you know, um, this package that society told me I had to fall for. So for me, it's much more about energy. Um, and I have always, you know, I just like I had, Johnny Depp on my wall. I also had Kate Moss on my wall and I felt the same about both of them. Um, you know what I mean? So I was always like that, always. And I feel like if you really tap into your energy and like your, you know, just your true feelings and I feel like more people might find that that's kind of common, you know what I mean? But we, we were taught to like shove it down, hide it, you know, put it away. Um, and I'm very just open and honest about that, you know? So I, I, um, absolutely. I mean, I've actually been attracted to every meat suit under the sun, you know, from, um, uh, you know, male, female transit, you know, trans, uh, in trans, um, transition. And, um, I, it's more just about like when I'm in the room with that person, like, how does that person make you feel, you know? And Caitlin and I obviously have this awesome connection and like this amazing best friendship. And she's obviously beautiful. And I, I just totally fell for her because I just think she's like an amazing person. But what's so amazing about her is that you, I had these feelings, I was honest with her and she was so cool about it, you know what I mean? And we're closer now than we ever were prior. Um, obviously there's moments that could be awkward or whatever, but you know, I'm so grateful, um, for her friendship because she got me through like a really difficult time, you know, coming out of my divorce and all of that. And I just feel like really lucky that I had somebody that related to me, you know, that felt that that is also fluid and that also has, you know, all of these feelings. And she actually kind of talked to me more like a therapist in ways and was like, I totally get why you're having these feelings because, you know we're very similar and you just got out of this and you know what I mean it was a very wow. healthy healthy cool conversation um off camera as well like obviously all of that continued you only get to see like a snippet but it was it was maybe awkward for a couple of days because everybody around was talking about it but at the end of the day like our friendship really like is real and it's real off camera and um I could not be happier for her and Christopher you know like he was a friend of mine um, prior and um, I actually helped facilitate a little bit of that relationship. So, you know. It's nice to see. It's nice to see that, you know, you, when you come from love, things can be healthy. It's okay. I can right. It's nice to see that, you know, things can be healthy and come from love and you don't have to have this animosity because you express that you feel something for someone and because they tell you gently you know they don't feel the same well what was, sorry. Sorry. Why is this person for the 
for like the audience who hasn't caught up yet, what would you say? And I know we have to tune in. If you guys haven't tuned in, you got to binge watch because it's on demand right now. They can binge watch. But what would you say? Like, how did you feel during that moment? Were you nervous? What so was nervous. her response? I, I literally wanted to vomit. Yeah, I was like so nervous for sure. But I also know that it's better sometimes to just put your heart out there. And honestly, it's not the first time I've been rejected, you know? So let's be honest. People are never honest, you know? And a lot of people on this show, they kind of won't do things if they're going to get rejected or look or look bad in any way. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that were like, oh, like, you know, she got rejected. You know what I mean? But I feel like it's totally honest. So why why not give people like like how many people have been rejected before? You know, and honestly, I'm still friends with a lot of people. I, I'm friends with almost everybody I've ever dated. I'm friends with people that have rejected me. <laughs> Clearly, I'm friends with people that I reject that I've rejected in that relationship way. I mean, I feel like the more mature you are, the more you're okay with love. And I'm so happy for her. Now she's done the love of her life. She's having a baby. Like, oh my God, congratulations. And she's wanted that so badly. So badly. And she found like oh. the most incredible guy too. Look so at I'm the so timing too. Like she wanted it with Brody. It was a lot, a lot of complications as we saw last season. They become friends too, which shows what an amazing person she is because she wasn't amazing Then you and Brody to... You know, two different genders, two different people wouldn't remain friends with her still. So you got to be a right. pretty special person to be, right? To be remain, I think. Absolutely. And there's great That's friends. Really and tough. just a really good human being, so. And how did the group respond to you guys? You know, you um, opening up your feelings for her and have they you know, received you with her? Because since they do, I know they gave her shit last season, but because she's almost now the matriarch, she's like part of the group now. You're her mm -hmm. best friend. Don't you think they would have given you some slack? The the, the people on the show? Yes, yeah. I mean, I know some of them do, but even like Spencer and Heidi, I would think, like as we see the season coming, you know, as the show. Oh, comes. yeah, for sure. I mean, Spencer was actually quite mean to me about it. They, it didn't air. It was one of the first nights we were filming at Brody's house, and it was the burial scene. Um, and in front of everybody, he actually walks up to me and says, um, you really think Caitlin's gonna go for you? She would never go uh, down from Miley. She would only go up from Miley and you're just a civilian. I was like, and this was like my first night of filming after the pandemic and I was like, or during the pandemic and I was like, I'm looking around and everybody's just standing there staring at me and I wasn't prepared for this. And I was kind of like, is this real? And I, and I know that I looked at him, I was like, wow, you're a piece of shit. And I know I shouldn't have said that but, and sometimes we don't love the way we react because it almost like, it almost like dulls your, your shine in a way because, um, you know, reactions are very powerful. So I wish that I would just kind of, I don't know, I don't know what I could have done in any other way because it was so hurtful. Um, and then what he does after that is ignore me the whole season so that I can never have a moment with him to be like, hey, why did you do this? You know what I mean? Right, so, but I'm, that's what's confusing is like wouldn't the producers want that or encourage for you guys they to yeah they tried they were like we're we're gonna we're sick of it we're gonna tell him like he needs to talk to you about it and there was like maybe two two sentences the night like uh Kristen came to the party and it just didn't it wasn't a moment because he wasn't very receptive to any of it but it's all it's it was a very I really don't know um what made you what made you, I would say, I guess the question is, what made you not want to say, hey, let's have a sit down talk on camera yourself? Like I was ready. Oh, I was like, ready. let's do it. But they avoid it. You know, like that's why Jason and Ashley, they're saying that they ambushed them um, at the, in Tahoe, didn't ambush them. They won't speak to them. They won't give anybody that moment. They do this thing where they just run off camera, run away, run away all season so that you don't have your moment with them because they're playing games the whole That's time bizarre. and that bizarre how producers would let them get away with that they don't let them but what do they do you know what i mean like what are they supposed to do it was really they don't i don't even think anybody wants to pick up this show for another season because of how hard it was to work with certain people that's what I was right because I, I would think I'm they, nervous I'm like I actually really need this my business you know there's a lot of people producers and people that need this show to continue on and I don't 
know if it's going to happen just because of how difficult some people were. And it really sucks for the people that really gave their all, you know what I mean? So even with ratings going up, I don't know if it's going to get picked up because, and at the end of the day, now they're going out talking crap about it, you know, saying it, you know, it's over and this and that, and it's just really a bummer. So I hope it's not over. I hope that the fans um, like me and everybody else who's willing to be on this show enough to keep it going. Um, I hope that the producers, uh, you know, like love the people that were honest and open and, you know, want to give them a shot. And the people that were difficult, like, bye, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think needs to change if you were to come back on another season for yourself, <laughs> for the cast? I don't, I'm not, I'm never going to be that person that says, let's recast it and screw these people. If these, if anybody wants to do a show and they want to work together, I'm down to have them all come back. You know what I mean? I mean, at the end of the day, like, I just want to make a great show and these moments are, are real um, and they're painful and they're intense, but I feel like if people don't want to be on the show, then they shouldn't be on the show because they make it hell for everybody else right and you're right people then start to take notice and you need a cast that's going to be united because what you guys all are really is organic friends that's what we watch you for right like you right. said I, i'm friends with all these people organically which is what makes you i think really relatable like your character in the show right because we could tell like you're real right and thank you so much for saying that and even even if we all have fights right which we do and those fights are real but like i had a conversation with Tim Mellencamp and she was on The Real Housewives and she was even like listen at the end of the day that's got to be really difficult for you because when we all fight we still all know it's a show and we have to have that resolution or that conversation with the other person we all want another you know season and we want to make this work on this show that doesn't happen this is it's like it's so hard you know what I mean so um I just hope that the ratings keep going up and that the network takes notice of the people and that the fans say, Hey, we love the, we love Caroline. We love Caitlin. We love, you know, Ashley and Jason and Brody and, and, and Justin and, you know, Brandon and, and people who want to be there, you know, that's important. That's why I want to shout out to the Chanel and the city fans. If you're listening, we want to make sure you guys tweet, you Instagram, you Facebook, exactly what Caroline said that it goes such a long way because the networks and the production companies are listening to what the public has to say. It's really the millennial generation with TV. And we're going to get into that a little bit before we wrap up how it's changed. It's really about not what the execs, the high power execs want anymore. It's not about like a bunch of five white men who have money. It's about what the public wants and you know what they're asking for. That's why the scene with you and Caitlin was so powerful, especially during pride month, because we've come such a long way and we're being, you know, we're being so progressive that, it was so nice to see on a show that 10 years ago you probably wouldn't have seen a scene like this and you see absolutely. it now absolutely 100 percent. and I was you know scared I was scared for reactions and things like that but I ultimately like it's so much healthier to speak your truth and we have to do it for the next generation right like I have to do it for my daughter you know she doesn't see um she doesn't look at the world the way that we were taught and scared to look at the world you know like our kids have to be the change that we all need to see. And that's so important. So I, I thank you for saying that. And I'm going to get to your daughter because you have such an adorable daughter. And it's so cool that you're a single mom. Um, how do you balance it out? Like talk to us a little bit about, and do you cook, so, cook together? Is she learning these rest, these sauce recipes from a young age? Are you teach, are you Chris Jennering her? <laughs> well, listen, I'm definitely like, you know, she's definitely learning a lot. She loves pasta. She loves pizza. She loves it all. She's, you know, it's in, it's in her blood. So I wouldn't be surprised if she was able to like do something um, even greater in the future. And I'm going to empower her unlike some of the stuff that I felt with trying to like, if she goes, mom, I have a better idea for pizza girl. I'm going to come in and help you out. I'll be like, great, because you understand what the kids are talking about these days, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna listen to my daughter, I'm gonna empower her. I'm going to, um, you know, just give her everything that I wanted as a kid. So um, yeah, she's so smart. She's so amazing. She knows when mommy has to work. And I gotta be honest, I, I mean, I'm gonna take my hat off to all the moms out there and dads out there who 
through this pandemic have had their children at home. And I mean, she was doing school on Zoom while I'm doing Zoom meetings and trying to balance both. I can't tell you how many times I had to go run and, you know, help her find the right paper and crayon and, you know, like help her with, you know, a reading lesson and this and that when it was so much easier to drop her off at school, get my work done. And then at the end of the day, I get to just play with her and have a good time. So it was just, it was hard. It was hard for her. It was hard for me, but you know, we're figuring it out. That's amazing because that's like, and that's, how does she feel about the reality show? Are you being on it? Are you balancing out being a full-time mom, being a reality star, being a CEO of your own brand? Like you said, it's a full-time job. How do you, any tips to share with our audience, how you balance it all? I think you just need a really good schedule, which I was never good with that. You really need to like, you really need to delegate. Every minute is super important. Time is so valuable, right? So um, I've just really made created a balance of like, okay, from this time to this time, I have to get work done. Um, but then I also don't want to be on my phone when I'm spending time with her. So I need to like, you know, um, tell my business partners, tell people like really get my schedule down. Right. Um, tell them I'm going to be with Bella from this time to this time and really just give her that time. And I could honestly, I could do even better at that. Um, I think it's been really hard since she's been home from school. So she goes back in August. Hopefully we don't know what's, what's happening with this virus and coming back and forth and all this craziness, but um, you know, it's, it, it's a balance. It's a balancing act, but I do know that when I spend my time with her and I just want to kiss her and hug her and hold her, and make sure she feels loved. That's so important. Um, so yeah, just that. A- you're an amazing mom. And you know, any tips to the audience out there who are moms, who are single moms, who just went through a divorce, like how to be single, how to really just kind of love life again and, and take life by the horns. Like you're, you've been taking like any tips for us for that? Yeah. I mean, listen, going through divorce is really, really hard. And everybody who's been through it knows luckily I, I have an amazing um, ex who's a wonderful father and I do, I'm so grateful for him. Um, And we have managed to make it really important to get along for her sake. Um, I mean, during the drop-offs, we're always doing like three-way family hugs and, um, you know, we spent Christmas together and, you know, we're doing whatever we can to make sure she feels safe and loved and, Um, and you know, just doing our best because at the end of the day, when you have a child, it's about the child. It's not about you. And I've seen so many divorced, um, parents, like literally put themselves before their kids needs and like the fighting and the, this and that is, is so bad for their mental health. It's so bad for them to think that you guys don't, don't love each other or love, you know, to talk badly about um your ex to your child I think is so detrimental and I've seen it happen um so many times and it's so wrong so all I can say is it's not about you anymore it's about your child and be the bigger person and speak highly of your child's other parent and try your best to communicate with them because it's going to affect your child and then your child's going to be in therapy working on all the stuff that you did. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I, nobody's perfect, right? Everybody's going to, in your thirties, you kind of, in your twenties, you're kind of wild and figuring things, figuring things out. In your thirties, you're kind of like healing from your childhood and like, yeah. you know, so that you can like live your forties and fifties, like calm and Zen. Um, So everybody is going to, you know, nobody's perfect, but do your best to be a positive uh, role model and also be kind because that other person is your child's other parent. And nobody wants to hear that mommy or daddy was, you know, is so awful all the time. You know, I think it's really important. That's so super important. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect for the rest of the season of The Hills. Oh, I'm from you because we get to see Pizza Girl coming up the fifth episode. Or is so when, does this, when does this air? This airs next week. So it's going to be next Wednesday or next Thursday. I'm going to air it. Okay, so if it airs on Wednesday, that's when... It'll probably be airing on Wednesday, to be honest, because I usually air okay, every... So the Hills airs that, at, airs that night. So I don't know what time, but, but that is a big episode for Pizza Girl. So 
um, this I'll next. I'll this then before, a couple of hours before, so we can both promote it, and then we can Great. try to awesome. take this to it. Awesome. So Wednesday so on, night. Yep. So on tonight's episode, you guys all have to tune in um, because it's the launch of Pizza Girl. You're going to get some background on me, my family. I do get a little frazzled and crazy because it's a really big night for me and it's very scary. And there's editors from Forbes and there's, you know, um, supermarket heads and all these different people that are at my launch. Um, and it was so nerve wracking and, you know, I was so scared. Um, but you guys get to learn a lot more about the inner workings of my family. You get to, you know, see a little bit between me and my dad. So definitely watch it's a very important episode for me and pizza girl and my family and i hope that you guys all enjoy the crazy your family are they proud of the fact of what, what you've made out of pizza girl and how you went on up off on your own oh yeah oh definitely my dad is now very proud um i think it was a little difficult at first because it was you know me not me moving on and doing my own thing um, but it, my dad is so proud. And I think you guys will all see that in the episode tonight. So tune so in. Um, yeah. what other things for the rest of the season do you think we can expect between you and the cast? Um, any types of, you know, can we see anything between Audrina and Brody? Also, do you ship that relationship between Audrina and Brody? I kind of do. I mean, I don't know them as well as you do, but from what I'm seeing so far, I kind of like, why weren't they together this whole time? You know, but you know, you know more. So talk to us a little bit about like what we can see with relationships, what your thoughts are on that between you and the rest of the cast, you know? I mean, listen, I do think Caitlin has a valid point where like she, what she was trying to get out of her relationship with Bodhi was a family and, you know, become a mom and this and that. And she wasn't able to do that. And, you know, Adrena does have a daughter and stuff like that. So she's, I kind of get that angle of like, maybe, maybe, maybe Brody's not the one, or maybe, maybe she's the one to change, to make Brody want to change. So who knows? You know what I mean? But I cannot spoil it for you guys because it's so good. You're going to really just be shocked. So does it put yeah. you in an awkward situation being close to both Caitlin and Audrina, those parallels? Does it put you ever in an awkward situation where they, you know, or do they get along and they're fine about it? No, there's definitely some awkward moments, for sure. We have to stay tuned. To the you way. have to stay tuned. You're making us want to watch it with some pop. You know what you guys got to do? You got to go on right now, okay? Go on to pizzagirl.com and order your pasta sauces so you can eat it with us while we watch on Wednesday nights. Every Wednesday night, that's what I'm going to do. It's my ritual. I'm going to eat my Pizza Girl pasta sauce. I'm going to watch the hills. How amazing is that? That's on With one stone. That's amazing. It's like TV dinners reinvented. You know yes. what I mean? Yes! Can you do that? Can you do those little lunchable millennial, you know, the microwave ones where you had the, oh my God, that would be perfect for you with the kids, with the pockets. Yeah. The pockets. I love it. Let's healthy. do it. Let's do it. Pizza okay. girl, TV dinners, reinvented yes. their food, organic, something like that. Yes, Please. definitely. We're in need of it. Okay, two more questions and then we can wrap up if that's cool. Cool, perfect. Mental health. So what would, what would you say, like, you're, you're taping this whole show. It's not easy to be a reality star. How did you cope with your mental health during this time and like just everything, knowing everything, right? Like um, everything on the show is real, but then off the show, you got the producers in your ear. Like, so like, how did you cope with this whole mental health situation? So it was important for me to, at different times, like turn off, you know, the news and turn off, um, you know, the Google alerts on your name and um, delete Instagram from your phone. Um, I think that sometimes those cleanses can be really, really good for you. And you kind of like reconnect with just, you know, simpler things in life. And I think that like being outdoors is really important, especially because we're also like confined to like Zoom and everything right now. Um, I'm actually about to hop in um, our family's RV on Sunday and we're just going, me, my daughter and my boyfriend, Ryan, and we're just going to go out into the into the world. And I think that that's important, you know, um, Ryan and I actually like hopped in his car during like some of the really stressful, um, I, ha I was like going through, I had so much anxiety with the show and all the drama and we jumped in his car and we just like slept in his Prius in, um, we went up to, um, the hot springs 
in in Mammoth. And I love it there. I love it there. Oh my God. I've never even done hot springs. Like he's oh. really good at all that stuff. But it was because I went to Australia abroad and they have all hot springs. It's so therapeutic. Yes, you're right. We people should do that. You're yeah, we got a bed. He has a bed. He has like it all dialed and he has a bed that you roll out into the back of the Prius and we like laid perfectly in it. It was just so amazing. Woke up and went to walk down the hot springs, did it all day for like two nights. It was so fun. And so many people do that. Like camping out in your car and like it was just really amazing and we're gonna go do it again and some more and yeah I just think it's important to like get in touch with nature and get out of your same old you know routine all the time because it can just become like a hamster wheel of hell (laughs) yeah I was gonna say how does he feel about the show and how do you not allow allow like technology and social media to affect you and your relationship right because like How do you not like be like, oh my God, everybody else is doing, like sometimes I get anxiety because I'm on Instagram and everybody, I feel like is doing so much more than I'm doing. And I'm like, I can't keep up. And honestly, like the truth is everybody, you must know when you, I'm only posting the really positive, everybody's posting their positive moments. Nobody's posting, you know, when they're like cramping on their period and like eating with like pimple cream on their face, you know, it's like people are only posting you know, those moments of awesomeness. Like when I am feeling an awesome moment, I'm like, oh, this is great. Let me film this. So I'm not doing it when I'm, but like every day has good and bad moments. You know what I mean? So just know that everybody, nobody's just so happy and amazing all the time. And my boyfriend's actually really good at it because he just doesn't care about social media. And he just like is never on it. He like doesn't see any of it, which is kind of nice. Um, he has it, but he's really never on it. And it's just refreshing to see. Um, and he definitely puts me in check sometimes when I'm just like super like all up in it and just getting anxiety from it. He's like, oh, it's time to get down and go out into the world and let's go jump in the ocean and, you know, reconnect and stare at each other in the eyes. You know, he loves that because I love that. Right. Find me another man like that. They don't make them anymore. Stare in the eyes. I know. Caroline is a keeper. He's definitely a keeper. I'm really, really grateful. Um, what does buddy. he think about the show and do you think he'll make an appearance on the show he was so <laughs> not about being on this show it was really really hard actually oh, because I'm sorry. it happened i was already on the show and then i meet him and i'm like going on the show and he's like that's kind of a red flag now <laughs> um he's like i don't know about this but luckily he loved me so much that he still went with it and actually um i don't know if you've seen it yet but he makes a tiny appearance um on the last episode that just that just aired last week so um you kind of see just getting a little feedback and I tell Caitlin that I have a crush and it was kind of a nice moment she's like you can't stop smiling and it was like this really cute moment and you see little flashes of him I don't know how much you're going to see of him because there was stuff filmed and I just don't know what I never know like I don't know I only I know as much as you guys do uh, about what's actually going to air you know so well, the so important much- question is, have your castmates tried Pizza Girl yet? And who's loving it the most and who hasn't tried it that you want to try? Well, they've all tried it because most of them came to, um, most of them came to the relaunch. Uh, the relaunch. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of people that weren't invited, but you know, most people came. Um, and then, um, so they've all tried it. And then, um, uh, Oh, and then Demore's Pizza is the pizza that's always at like Brandon's house when the guys are playing poker and all of that. Oh my God, so- that's the famous, infamous, famous pizza. Me and my girls were watching. We're like, we gotta go. We're like the Jewish kids. We we gotta go to Demore's Pizza when we're in LA. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You do, you got it. There's all the horribly embarrassing photos on the wall. It's like any, you know, Italian dad spot with like, you know, they don't even ask my approval for any of the photos on the walls it's just like too bad they nail it in I was a teenager and I was trying to like pull him off and take him down and he just doesn't care so yeah there's always horribly embarrassing pictures of me in there but what is good about it I will give my dad this one bit of credit my boyfriend um actually saw photos of me on the wall in there prior to us hanging out and he's like she's kind of cute or whatever so that kind of worked in my favor see you never know you you always got to put yourself out there so right so I have a question too any celeb we have a dating question and a Chanel in the City question and I promise we'll wrap up I just okay okay it's like a thing for every celebrity to answer but what would you say which celebrity would you say you would love or dream of to like try pizza girl 
that hasn't. I guess. Ooh, try pizza, girl. Hmm. Well, I'm honestly like, let's see. Hmm. Well, okay. Ooh, to try it. Listen, um, like Alicia Silverstone left me a really great voice note the other day saying that she loved it and was eating it out of the jar. Um, wow. that, yeah, that was really cute. Her voice note was like hilarious. That's nature. Yeah, it was really sweet. Um, and then, um, you know, my business partners are good friends with um, Naomi Watts. So I'm hoping we can get some in her hands and see what she thinks. Yeah, because they're Australians and they know her. So I'm hoping to get that to her. And then, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, foodie people, people that really like, yeah, that's a hard one. Um, you know, I'm obsessed with Julia Roberts. So maybe we can get some to her one day. Put that in the universe. Yes, Julia Roberts and some pizza girl stuff. I could see that endorsed. I could see her. Oh. I see right, it. right, right. I'm on it. Yeah, Julia, if you're listening, try my stuff. Um, yeah, no, she, that'd be cool. That'd be that'd cool. Be really cool. Yeah, that'd be so cool. She's the coolest. Would you say, um, so for dating, right? So we girls on Chanel in the City, we can use your tips on dating. Any like dating tips on how to really just get a guy to take us seriously? You know, it's always these fuck boys. Like, what are we doing? What do you, what would you say that we should do to like set the tone, right? To get the right guy. I mean, listen, I did it all wrong right out of my divorce. I just like kind of speed dated. I was on the apps and I was just like on the apps for, you know, guys and girls. And I was just like, let's just see what happens. And for me, it was kind of like, a good way to just preoccupy my mind because it was like really hard for me to like all of a sudden not be with my daughter that was really really hard for me um I just felt really alone so I just kind of like occupied my mind with like fun dates and things like that but it, it's definitely good not to get wasted okay girls like do not get wasted and I'm speaking from knowledge because I did and it never works. It's never positive. Guys are not into it. They don't think it's cute. Girls are not into it. They don't think it's cute. So, I mean, it's never fun to be like, to look back and kind of put together the night and be like, what did I do or say? Or, and it, I know it's hard because you're nervous when you're on the date, right? You're kind of nervous and you're like, and you keep drinking because you're a little nervous. The more sober you are, honestly, maybe like one drink, okay, just to loosen it up a little, but if you can't do the one drink thing, just don't drink because at least you'll know, like they actually liked your personality and whatever. But I think, and I've done it. I've been like the drunk girl that like, you know, didn't get the, the, you know, the next date because it just wasn't for a guy that wants to build a future with somebody, you know what I mean? Or a, a female that wants to build a future with somebody. If you're in, if you're just out to like date, you know what I mean? And if you're just out to like, um, get laid, um, you know, then like, then they don't care. But I think if it's someone who's really searching for their one, um, it's important to kind of like show your best, your best self because you could regret it. And then they'll think that's kind of who you are, even when it's not. So try to stay sober on your dates. And I think that they'll work out a lot better. That's a great tip. You don't want to be the drunk girl. You want to be the pizza girl. Yeah, don't be the drunk girl. You drunk off that sauce afterwards, honey, but you don't yeah. want to. But that's exactly. a great tip. I've never heard that, like, specific. That's a very great focus tip, and I think it's an amazing tip for our audience. Don't get drunk on the first dates. Don't get problem. drunk on dates. Just don't do it. Not first dates anyway. Once you guys are best friends and whatever and having fun, go for it. But once he kind of, like, gets to know you or, you know, um, that person gets to know you. So, yeah. So one thing with Chanel in the City audience, do you, what's a place in LA or New York when you come here that you love to eat at or, you know, go to escape to something that you can, re you know, recommend to us ladies or men? Yeah, I mean, I'm all about, you know, the Italian food and um, obviously, oh my God, am I going to forget and not say it right? Um, hey, babe, where is he? Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so bad with names on the spot. It's so awful. Me too. I think I'm like, God forbid, having like early memory. Ah. 
Dang it. Dang it, my New York spot. Um, or LA, it could be LA too, because we go, go out to LA as well. I know, but I'm so mad because it's my favorite spot in New York and I was just there. Obviously, we gotta go to Demore's and get Demore's pizza, I you know, like. I'll that's post it all spot. over, yeah. That's the spot, and obviously like. Demore, yeah. that's the spot in LA. Demore's, Demore's, Demore's is the spot that you need to go to in LA, for sure. It's the best hole in the wall pizza you can find on the West Coast without a doubt. So definitely. Overall, what would you say your experience on the Hills has been? I think it's been amazing and it's been really awful. So it's been both. But at the end of the day, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. And I just want to make sure that, you know, the cast members that were inviting uh, the network and the producers that gave me the opportunity know how grateful I am for the opportunity to share my story. Um, obviously, you know, get my brand out there. I mean, what a great opportunity. So I'm so grateful. Um, at the end of the day, it was, it was the right move. And I'm proud of the way that um, I handled it. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience on what you're up to? Next, acting wise, do you think you're going to do? Oh, her? actually, my girlfriend, um, one of my best friends, Janelle Shirtcliffe, she just had her directorial debut and it's coming out on Lionsgate, um, Lionsgate and it's called Habit Ooh. and it's with um, Bella Thorne and Paris Jackson and I have a cameo. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah. I can't wait. Yes. Yeah, so I have a really cool cameo and it's called Habit and the trailer's actually on my Instagram at Caroline DeMore and Janelle Shirtcliffe is a genius and I'm so proud of her. She does all of my um, creative direction and photography for Pizza Girl as well. So, wow. yeah. And where can they get, they could go to pizzagirl.com right now to get their orders. We're going to post it on our Instagrams what percentage they get off for Chanel in the City fans. And oh. they could follow you on, where can they follow you on all social media platforms, including Pizza Girl? So, yeah, so they can follow me at Caroline DeMore and at Pizza Girl Official on Instagram. Thank you so much, Caroline, for coming on the podcast. You're an amazing inspiration. We need more people like you out in the world, reality TV, TV in general. I'm super excited for your success, and I'm super excited to see you on in movies, cooking channel, TV shows. I'm so excited to see Pizza Girl expand and grow because you're such a beautiful, amazing human being. You really are. I'm not just saying that. And I'm, it's been an honor to talk to you today. It's been an honor to have you on. And thank you so much for being here. You are so sweet and so kind and such a great host, honestly. Like, wow. yeah, you're so, you're, you're so I'm like, I kind of like kept you on. I usually don't keep you on for that long. I'm going to let you go. But hey guys, it's Caroline DeMore, the pizza girl from the Hills on MTV. And you're listening to Chanel in the City with Chanel Omari. Oh.